We are all born with greatness. What differentiates us is how and when we use that greatness. This chair represents where we all want to be in life, a reward. So answer me this question out loud with conviction. If you take a risk in your life and you fail, if you act on that failure, will there be a lesson? Yes or yes? Yes. Very good. <laughs> so therefore, if you take a risk and you calculate it and you're not sure it's going to end up the way you want, but you see the value of if you want to get that reward, then there's merit in trying to take the risk. Yes or yes? Yes. Very good again. <laughs> so this chair represents the risk. Let me ask you, think of a dream or a goal that you've had, a risk that you haven't taken. Now ask yourself why. We've just agreed that the only way to receive a reward is to take the risk. The reason why is because of this middle chair. This is what's getting in the way, the naysayers. You see, the naysayers, I'm not talking about the people that love us, that give us advice and want us to do well. I'm talking the people that give us a little bit of negative energy that tell us that we can't do it or shouldn't do it. If there's one lesson that I want you to please learn from my speech today is to ignore the naysayers, because when we can ignore the naysayers, it will fortify us with the power to find our greatness. There was nothing more years ago than what I wanted was to be on Dragon's Den. I tried out. I met with a producer named Tracy. Minutes within my pitch, she cut me off and she said, next! I said, but you didn't even let me finish my pitch. And she was my only ticket to meeting the dragons, the venture capitalists that I hope would invest money into my business. And I would exchange my business for a percentage and hopefully, you know, do well on my wedding favor business. I sold giftware online. She said I wasn't good enough. She tore me apart. She said if I wanted to, I could come back next year and try out again. And I'll tell you something. I went home that night bawling. But I realized something. Tracy wasn't bad because she was my naysayer. Tracy just didn't know my passion, my dream, my vision. She didn't know that I had a full-time job that I had to wake up for every morning while I was up at night with my son who has health challenges and he was having a seizure. She didn't know that years before I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and my doctor told me that I would be in a wheelchair within 10 years. She didn't know that, it wasn't her fault. She wasn't my naysayer, she just didn't know my passion. So I decided the next day, I was gonna try it again. <laughs> so I got in my car, I drove an hour away because I thought, you know what, there's no way in hell that Tracy's gonna be there, maybe the next producer will let me through. So I went in line, over 7,000 people ahead of me, waited for my number to be called. I get up to the table, guess who it is? <laughs> so true. So she said, didn't I tell you to come back next year? I said, yes, but just hear me out. She let me do my pitch. I made it through to meet with the dragons. I did make it to air. And here's where the story gets good. So on the panel in that season, there were four men and one woman. Arlene Dickinson was the woman. Now, just out of respect, I'm not going to tell you who, who humiliated me, but she was really rude. Um, yeah. She put one of the tiaras on my head from my giftware table, and she said, Gabby, I crown you as the worst presenter on the show. I have my title. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. And what's worse is she told me that I was a poor speaker and my dream was to be a speaker. She told me I had a terrible business model and my dream was to be self-employed. My dream was to quit my job. She cut me up. I was devastated. I went home that day naturally without a, a deal. <laughs> Big surprise, I know, you're all surprised. So, but here's where it gets interesting. When the show aired on TV, my website crashed because I couldn't handle all the sales. I received
received a lot of hate mail and a lot of negative emails from people, but I also had people that were my naysayers and people that did want me to succeed. From that experience, I was able to leave my full-time job. I was able to watch my health. I was able and still am able to raise two beautiful children and volunteer. I started a new business, my passion project. I still have that website selling and receiving residual income. What I've learned from that is I would not have gotten there if I listened to all my naysayers. What's stopping you? You've just admitted you've had some risks that you wanted to take. What's getting in the middle of taking that risk? You've agreed with me at the beginning to finding your purpose and finding your greatness is to get the reward by taking the risk. Thomas Edison was told that he couldn't learn, but he basically came up with a thousand inventions before he came up with the light bulb. So I ask you, if you want to take your risk and get your reward, take all that never negative energy, put it in a ball, let it fortify you to greatness so you can be successful.